بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ان دا پریویس لیکچر وی ہیو اسٹڈیڈ دا زی ٹرانسفارم دس از پارٹ ٹو آف دیٹ لیکچر سو لیٹ اس ریوائز دا ڈیفینیشن آف دا زی ٹرانسفارم سو ایف وی آر گیون ا سیکوینس ایکس این وی آر این ایز فرام زیرو ٹو انفینیٹی دین دا زی ٹرانسفارم آف دس سیکوینس ایز ڈی نوٹیڈ بائی زی آف ایکس این and it is defined as z transform of x n is equal to summation n is from 0 to infinity x n divided by z power n this is the basic definition of the z transform and we have seen that when we transform x n we get another function which is a function of z so that is why sometime we denote the z transform by capital x of z in the previous lecture we have studied several properties of the z transform in which one property is that if we are given c power n x n then how we can find the z transform of this thing so the z transform of c power n x n is equal to capital x of z divided by c we will use this property to solve some problems but let us explain this property this property says that if we have to find the z transform of c power n x n what we have to do first of all we have to find the z transform of x n which is given by x of z now just replace z by z by c and we can get the z transform of c power n x n which will be equal to x of z by c and that will be our required solution uh, we have solved 11 problems in the previous lecture and now let us use this property to solve problem number 12 which says that find the z transform of 1 over 2 power n cos alpha n to solve this problem we know that from the previous lecture that the z transform of cos alpha n is equal to z square minus z cos alpha divided by z square minus 2z cos alpha plus 1 and now we have to use this property in this case you can see c is 1 over 2 so we have 1 over 2 power n so using this property we have to just replace z by z by 2 so z by 1 over 2 so let us write this property that z transform of c power n c power n x n is equal to 
x of z by c here we can see that c is equal to 1 over 2 so let us now we uh, we have to obtain z transform of 1 over 2 power n cos alpha n so what we have to do we have to just replace z by z by c but c is 1 over 2 so we can write let us put this z or replace this z by z by c but c is 1 over 2 here so we will get this thing minus z over 1 over 2 cos alpha and divided by this z is again z over 1 over 2 whole square minus 2 z over 1 over 2 cos alpha and now if we simplify this we can get that this is 4 z square minus 2 z cos alpha divided by 4 z square minus 4 z cos alpha plus 1 and this is the required solution of the given problem so we can see to obtain the z transform of 1 over 2 power n cos alpha n first of all we have to obtain the z transform of cos alpha n so you can use the definition if you forget this formula so just use the definition and you will obtain this transform now in the solution just replace z by z over 1 over 2 and after simplification you will get the solution now let us solve problem number 13 find the z transform of e power minus 2n sin 3n to solve this problem again we have obtained the z transform of sin alpha n or just replace alpha by n so the z transform of sin 3n is equal to z sin 3 divided by z square minus 2z cos 3 plus 1 if you forget this result just use the definition of z transform and you can get this result now to obtain the z transform of e power minus 2n so sin 3n so in this case we can see that here c is equal to e power minus 2 so we have to just replace we replace z by z divided by e power minus 2 which is equal to z e power 2 and we can get the required result because again here we are using this rule that z of c power n x n is equal to x of z by c so just replacing z by z e square so we can get therefore the z transform of e power minus 2n sin 3n is equal to replace z by z e square sin 3 divided by again replace z by z e square whole square minus 2 again replace z by z e square cos 3 plus 1 
Now just divide the numerator and denominator both by e power 4 and dividing numerator and denominator by e power 4 we can get that the required solution is z e power minus 2 sin 3 divided by z square minus 2 z e power minus 2 cos 3 plus e power minus 4 and this is the required solution of the given problem. Now by using the same techniques you have to obtain the z transform of e power mi minus alpha n cos beta n is equal to this thing. Similarly, you have to prove that the z transform of e power minus alpha n sin beta n is equal to this result. So this is your homework. Problem number 15. In the previous lecture, we have obtained the z transform of n is equal to z divided by z minus 1. Here I have to use a different technique to solve this problem. Now to solve this problem we know that by the definition of the z transform that this is equal to summation n is from 0 to infinity xn divided by z power n. To obtain the z transform of n, we can write according to this definition that this is equal to summation n is from 0 to infinity n divided by z power n. Now let us expand this summation. If I put 0, I will get 0. If I put 1, I will get 1 over z. Similarly, I can get 2 over z square plus 3 over z cube and plus up to so on. Let us take 1 over z as common from here. So if I take 1 over z as common from here, I can get that this is 1 plus I can write this is 2 z power minus 1 plus 3 z power minus 2 and plus up to so on. Now here we can use the binomial theorem. According to this theorem we can write that this is 1 over z of 1 minus z power minus 1 whole power minus 2. And if I simplify this I will get that this is equal to 1 over z into 1 minus 1 over z whole square. If I take the LCM of here, the z will be LCM. So if I take the LCM and simplify this a little more, I can get z square divided by z into z minus 1 whole square. This term is 1 over z. Now, we can see that they can cancel, so we can get z over z minus 1 whole square and this is the required solution and from here you can get the origin of convergence which is 1 over z must be less than 1 and from here we can obtain that z 
absolute must be greater than 1. So this is the required solution of this problem. Another important property of the Z transform is that if we have a sequence Xn and its Z transform is X of Z, then the Z transform of N X N is equal to minus Z D by D Z X of Z. It means that if we are given a sequence of this form n x n so if we have to find the z transform of n x n what we have to do we have to just obtain the z transform of x n and then we have to use this property that z transform of n x n is equal to minus z derivative with respect to z of x of z. Now let us use this property to solve problem number 16. Problem number 16 is find the z transform of n square. Now, again we know that the Z transform of N is equal to Z divided by Z minus 1 whole square. Now, to obtain the Z transform of N square, we can write that this is given by z transform of n square is equal to z transform of n into n. And now we know that the z transform of n is this one, so we have to use this property. According to this property, here xn is n. So according to this property, we can write that this is minus z d by d z of z divided by z minus 1 whole square. So we have to just differentiate this. If I differentiate this, we can get that this is minus z into minus 1 minus z divided by z minus 1 whole cube. And if I simplify this, I can get that this is z into 1 plus z divided by z minus 1 whole cube. And this is the required solution. Now, using the same procedure, you have to solve problem number 17. Problem number 17 is find the z transform of n cube then find the z transform of n power 4. This is the required questions and we have to find its solution. So this is, it is all.